Good evening. I'll call the Steering and Legislative Committee to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start by welcoming the new committee members to our committee here. Uh, Commissioner Brad Turner, who is our Vice Chair. Commissioner Paul Johnson. Commissioner Robert Stevens. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. And welcome back, uh, Commissioner Robert P. and Alan McAdoo. First order of business is to approve our minutes from our last meeting. I'll call on Vice Chair Turner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I review the minutes and I find them in order and make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we would like to announce the election of the Chairman Pro Tem and Chaplain at the September 11th Commission meeting. We need to announce the vacancy on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Third, we need to announce two vacancies and one alternate vacancy on the Beer Board. Announce Commissioner vacancy on the Agricultural Advisory Board. We need to announce Commissioner vacancy on the Community Care Board. Uh, announce Commissioner vacancy on the Records Commission. And uh, also to announce three Commissioner vacancies on the Insurance Committee. <clears throat> and the addition uh, add the Human Resource Director as ex officio member of the Insurance Committee. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. And then we need to fill a vacancy on the codes enforcement adjustment and appeals board. I believe, uh, Becky, we have one application, which is Mr. David Adams. Mm -hmm. Is Mr. Adams here? Yes. Mr. Adams, would you like to make a comment? Only that this committee has nominated me for several terms to serve on this board, and I'm still willing to serve. Appreciate your service. Is there a motion? Move that we appoint Mr. Adams by acclamation. Second. Uh, can we have a motion and a second? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, we need to fill a vacancy or fill vacancies on the audit committee. We have uh, two county commissioners' um, seats to fill. We have two applications, one from Commissioner Charlie Baum and a, from Commissioner Will Jordan. Is there a motion? Move to accept. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. The um, road board um, has not met yet, nor has the Board of Education. So they will meet and will have their nominee to us uh, next week or next meeting. We also need to fill a CPA position. We have uh, one application. And Becky, who's that application? Mr. Crocker. Mr. Crocker. Is Mr. Crocker here? He is not. Okay, he's not here. Is there a motion? Make a motion to appoint Mr. Crocker to the audit committee. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. And he's also uh, currently on the, the committee. He's, uh, yes. Is this other gentleman a CPA also? Oh, no. <coughs> it appears he may be. Is Mr. Tidings in the audience? Okay. Okay, I'm going to assume that, uh, let's see, it doesn't say if he applied for the CPA or the uh, uh, citizen, so I'm going to assume he applied for the CPA. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Did it say there can only be one CPA on the One CPA, so we need to choose from um, Mr. Cochran, who I think currently serves on the committee, and you may see the application of Mr. Tidings. If you want to take a few minutes to look at those applications, and then I'll take. Uh, do we already have a motion on the I floor? I have a motion, so do you want to? Okay. I could rescind that motion to, to give the committee time to okay, look at the, the other applicant. And who was the second on that? Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Okay. Is it okay with you, Mr. Yes. Okay. Let's just. And then when you're ready, I'll take a motion. Are, are we just assuming that he's. What if he 
wants to apply for the just a regular citizen's position. Well, he's not here to clarify, so I don't know what to. Did, did anyone apply for the regular citizen's position? We've got well three. If if he's part of the citizen, if not, there's two. Is that right? Thank you. What two are you showing, Mr. Chairman? There is a Robert Coggins. And he's here. And he's here, and Mr. Teresa McGee. McKee. McKee, she's here. So, um, again, it's just because he's, he's got uh, credentials for a CPA, I'm assuming he's applied for a CPA position. But it's the will of the committee if you decide you want to take him as a citizen. And we're ready for motion whenever the, the committee is ready. Mr. Chairman, that we nominate both of the CPA applications and choose one. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second to uh, nominate two and vote for one. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Becky, when you get a chance to call the roll, please. Commissioner Johnson. Voting for two. You, you're voting for one of the two. One of the two. And it would be Mr. Tidings or Mr. Crocker? Crocker. Crocker. Mr. Crocker. Commissioner McAdoo. Uh, Mr. Crocker. Commissioner P. Crocker. Commissioner Phillips. Crocker. Commissioner Stevens. Crocker. Commissioner Turner. Crocker. Commissioner Gage. Uh, Crocker. Mr. Crocker's name will be uh, submitted to the commission on September the 11th. And we have two uh, applications then to fill the citizen committee member, uh, Teresa McKee. If you would like to stand and make a few comments. I'm Teresa McKee, and I've served on the audit committee a year and a half, and I still feel like I've got a lot more to give. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Robert Coggins. I'm Robert Coggin. Uh, I work with National Healthcare Corporation. Been a, uh, currently, I'm a safety coordinator, uh, been a healthcare administrator. I'm on the board of Manchester Christian School. We're on the finance committee, and I uh, believe I could uh, serve in this area. Are there any uh, questions for any of the two candidates? I'm interested in what's your background, um, education. Yeah. Uh, Bachelor's in business administration, administration from Harvard University. Yeah. You have MBA from Harvard yeah. University also. Yeah. I thought you said it was that kind of well, I was asking each candidate yeah. what their background was school. that qualifies them for the. Well, I worked for State Farm for 26 years. I don't have the application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got my hand. But actually, oh, maybe I do. I worked also on the audit committee before. I did. Okay, is there a motion? Nominate the woman and uh, vote for one. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, so we two have been nominated and we vote for one. Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Coggin. Commissioner McAdoo. Uh, Mr. Coggins. Commissioner P. Coggins. Commissioner Phillips. Coggins. Commissioner Stevens. Coggins. Commissioner Turner. Coggins. Commissioner Gooch. Mr. Coggins. Mr. Coggins' name will be submitted to the full commission Thursday night. Mr. McKee, we appreciate your service. Thank you for the application. And we need to fill the vacancy on the school board. We have six applications. Um, Jeff Jordan, Mr. William Hopper, Mr. Gary Eakes, uh, Mrs. Sal Eady, 
um, Mr. Jamie, Ms. Jamie <coughs> Reed, and Mr. Robert Warden. So we'll start with um, Jeff Jordan. If you'd like to make a few comments, please. Thank you, Mr. Gooch. I appreciate your time and efforts, obviously. Uh, this is a fill out a two year term uh, when Mr. Nipper uh, resigned to join the commission and was won two elections to do so. Um, I, uh, I think I've been asked a little bit about uh, various uh, uh, issues, I guess, that are before the commission right now, and I'm, I'm going to try to be brief. I think most of the material that you would need about me personally is on the resume, and you're certainly welcome to ask any question that you might want to ask. I'm going to address Common Core for just a minute, which I do not like particularly at all, but we're going to have to admit that it's, it's likely here. Uh, we're going to have to limit the damage as best we can, I think. We can write all the letters to the governor that we want to write and complain and moan and groan about it. But uh, they're going to make us implement it, it looks like, within the next 12 months, even though we have delayed the testing portion of that for at least that length of time. It's, a, it's, it's difficult and it's not particularly good. However, eventually, the State Department is going to make us do it, and the federal government is going to make us do it, and we just got to limit the damage. We certainly cannot refuse it, uh, I don't believe, and get away with it without losing considerable funding. The other thing, which I think is a really a much larger issue, is the issue of the budget itself. The, the school board budget is about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 77 percent, 80 percent or so of the entire budget, so over about 308 or 9 million. I think uh, as chairman of the health and ed for five years and a member of that committee, I know it fairly well and have followed its uh, progress, but many of you can say the same thing because you were at one time or another on that committee or served a number of years with me on that committee. Uh, the point, however, is that we cannot continue, I don't believe, to go down this road of, uh, of building 50, and the next one will be well over $60 million high schools. We just cannot do it. Our, our tax structure, unless unless you and your other 14 commissioners are willing to raise taxes by a considerable margin, I don't believe that's going to happen. I, I, don't, I don't think we, we can continue to do that. Construction, Stewart's Creek was $50 million. Construction cost goes, goes up about $5 million a year. On average, excuse me, 5% a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and some, some estimates are just a touch higher than that. And we're already three years into that since we funded Stewart's Creek. So, I mean, that's a, a financial disaster for our future if we keep going down that road. I'd like to cut those costs. I submitted some ideas to the school board on that very thing a couple of years ago in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago this last spring, and they have implemented a little bit, but uh, really, have not gone very far with it, but that's just a couple of, of issues that are are, are, are happening as, as and, and will continue to happen whether I'm, I'm there or not, uh, is how we attack the solving is what's important. I want to uh, also say to you that, and I think you probably know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. Uh, education is, uh, of course, very close to my heart. I've been uh, passionate about it uh, since I started teaching school back in the days when we carved our lesson plans on rock and so forth. <laughs> and uh, as I said, been on the commission for eight years, health and ed for the entire eight. Uh, I've been in all 46 schools at least once, four or five of them within the last three months. Um, and there, there are plenty of issues out there when, of course, funding is a major part of them. But if I'm appointed to this, to this uh, 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 two-year term, um, I'm, I'm going to consider, and ed education is big about, uh, um, about little catchphrases like uh, special kids and challenged kids, and my favorite all time is the at-risk kids. And, but the truth of the matter is, in today's world, that's all of them. That's every single one of them. And there's a, uh, we are advancing on uh, uh, 42,000. By the time this two-year term is up, we'll be over 42,000. We gained 700 since May, since last May. Actually, to be accurate, I think Mr. Odom's last figures that he gave us last week at the school board meeting, which I attended, was 697 of that many. So we're over 700, I'm sure, just in growth today. Those funding problems uh, is true 
in every single department that we have. How are we going to meet the needs and services of the people and a growing population uh, without raising taxes uh, to a prohibitive highs? Uh, and, and that's really the issue with the Sheriff's Department or, or archives or school or whatever. And that's a, a very difficult decision. Anyway, I would appreciate your support and appreciate the opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to speak to the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. W William Harper. Could I ask a quick question before? I apologize. Let's go ahead and ask questions as the candidate speak. Thank you, so, Mr. Thank you Mr. Chairman. This is a two-year appointment. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Jordan, you, uh, uh, Commissioner Jordan, you uh, 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 interested in that position when the election comes around? Ms. Phillips, it's, it's two years away. Yes. If it were four or five months, I think I think I could answer that question definitely. I'm going to I'm going to answer it uh, how, I, how I feel as of right this minute. I would say in two years I would not run. I'm not making that promise, but I, I would say my intentions right now in two years would, would be to retire. Hope I can contribute by that two years. However, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Is there Mr. William Harper in the audience? Mr. Gary Eeks. My name is Gary Eeks. I was here about last November sometime before the committee that served, the steering committee that served at that time. At that time, uh, there was a vacancy in my school zone. This committee uh, recommended me to the full commission in a six to one vote. There was only one other candidate, and to tell you the honest truth, he pretty well shot himself in the foot by saying he wanted to try to see if he really liked the job. Well, I got the job, and I like the job. I've done a good job. Uh, I'm, I've been commended by everybody on the school board. Gary, we're going to miss your wisdom. Gary, we enjoy what you, or we appreciate what you've done. I have many people in uh, my school zone who have asked me, and I have been moved. I have been transitioned into another zone. The zone I was in, um, the election was held and Mr. Estes right. was the elected mm -hmm. official in that zone. So I've been transitioned into another zone. This opportunity, I had no idea when I was here before this committee that this opportunity would present itself uh, because Mr. Nipper had two more years to fill and uh, he decided to do something different. So I worked alongside Mr. Nipper, I worked alongside the full committee, I worked alongside the, the uh, administrative staff. Uh, I too have a passion for education. It started as a very young man. Uh, I've been, I have thousands of hours, volunteer hours, unpaid hours, working with children, working with parents. Uh, I tutor now several children in math uh, at my home. Uh, some of them are friends of the family. Some of them are friends who are people who just said, hey, try this guy, see if he can help you. So I've been blessed to be able to do that. Uh, math is uh, something that uh, you know, I think it's kind of a God-given thing at times, so, is, so are some other talents that you have. But uh, as far as Common Core, many school teachers, many administrators uh, support many of the principles of Common Core. Common Core's original intention was to make students think. I've been tutoring in the city schools for the last four years. S three years ago, students were not thinking. Two years ago, they weren't thinking. Common Core has opened the door to interaction in the classroom. If you've been a teacher, you know that that's what you want. You want students talking about, hey, what's it, what are those numbers? How do you get that answer? It, can you do it this way? Can you do it this way? So Common Core is going to change its name, as we were told by a state senator in a meeting in Gatlinburg of the school board last uh, <laughs> July. It's going to be changed, but it will remain in, in some fashion. I think one of the big Concerns with Common Core was that it was used as a tool to uh, evaluate teachers. Teachers were opposed to that. And so they, uh, that uh, disillusionment uh, has caused a lot of concern. I think there's been a lot of concern that it's controlled by the federal government when indeed 43 governors put Common Core together to uh, determine they took their experts from 43 states and set them down and said, how can we progress in education? And that's something we have to do. Yeah, there are at-risk kids. There are kids that are falling behind and even though today through the third grade a teacher will have only 
20 students in a classroom. It's not like when some of us went to school and the teacher would have 35. She could handle 35. But today, uh, 20 is a load. You've got 20. Well, you've got five here that are really doing a great job getting everything. You've got 10 in the middle you're bringing along, and you've got five down here that need some help. I've been volunteering with uh, primarily those five uh, in the city schools, spending as much as 16 hours a week uh, working with those kids. So I have a passion. I'm well respected in my community. Ask anybody who knows me. Uh, I've had various roles. I've been very much involved in my church and in other community activities. Uh, my wife and I contribute to many charitable organizations. Uh, she's worked as a nurse forever and um, just uh, Murfreesboro, uh, like some others who have applied for this job, is my home. I have many friends who are in the education business. They'll tell you, if Gary says it's true, he'll do his best to make it true. I'm a dependable person. I've done a very good job. I've had no conflicts. I've had numerous parents call me. I've been able to speak to them on the telephone in a compassionate, concerned way that says, hey, let's go through this process and see how we can resolve your problem. That really is where the school board, in, in a lot of ways, can best function. The school board is very limited in, in what it's um, what it can legally do. I've had about 60 hours training in the school board law and in uh, the functions of the school board in the community. So I'm prepared to continue. I've been I've been there nine months. Um, I'm I'm right in touch with everything that's going on. We don't have anything in my mind that's drastic. We're just, as you know, we have one of the best school systems in this state. And that's not totally attributable to those of us who are in this room. That's mainly attributable to the teachers and the administrators in the system itself. I do appreciate your time, and uh, I would ask for your full consideration. Uh, I would hope that uh, in doing so, you could decide that uh, I can continue to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eakes. Is there a question? Any questions for Mr. Eakes? Same question, Mr. Eakes. Yes. Plans, future plans? Sorry, yes. Uh, if I were to serve this, when I started this, I thought, no, I'm going to fill out Tim Tackett's nine months. Mm -hmm. And I could not run. And then all of a sudden, I'm rezoned. So, you know, I, I, I could run. So in, in, in two years, yes, I would run for this position if I were uh, selected to serve and continue to serve in that capacity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Riggs. Uh, Ms. Shell Eady. Hi, good evening. Thank you, Chairman, and um, thank you, Steering Committee uh, members. Thank you, members of the audience, and especially the people who came to support me this evening. Um, I'm Michelle Eady. I am currently an academic advisor with Middle Tennessee State University. I've been in um, education for going on 30 years now, and I would like to share, I guess, my message this evening in two parts. This one part would be what I bring to the table in terms of um, experience and education, and of course the other part would be what I bring in terms of community service. So um, my undergraduate degree is in uh, political science. My graduate degree is in educational administration. I am currently a doctoral student at Trevecca Nazarene University studying leadership and professional practice. Um, I have done a lot of volunteering, especially in the schools, uh, reading in schools, day, uh, sit on the Books from Birth board, uh, read to succeed, and I also have three uh, sons who have either gone through the Rutherford County school system or are currently attending. Um, as I listed in my application, I have experience um, as a parent with the Blackman school system, all three schools, as well as McFadden, and um, I have a son currently at Central Magnet. I've also been very active in terms of PTO, and um, I guess from a leadership standpoint, I, uh, I've been appointed, actually reappointed by Governor Haslam to our state um, workforce development board. And because uh, our schools seem to be moving so much in two directions, one, making sure that our students are qualified either to go into post-secondary education and or to find gainful employment. Um, my connections in post-secondary education, especially as an advisor, and as you know, getting a lot of the students who come from Rutherford County Schools into my office, as well as sitting on a statewide workforce development board. I feel that I bring to the table kind of both sides of what we're going to be looking at moving forward um, as a district. 
Again, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm available for questions if anyone has them. To predict a question, do you plan to run in two years? That's a very interesting question. Um, one of my mentors who has unfortunately uh, passed on, she was a colleague of mine at Middle Tennessee State University, um, Helen Blankenship. She always talked to me about her role on the board. We never talked about running for elected office. And even though I am a political science graduate, I've worked on campaigns behind the scenes. I've never seen myself running for any particular office. Having said that, if there is a community groundswell that feels I've done a great job for two years and I'm asked to run, I would not hesitate to run for that office. And just quick follow up the two that spoke before you listed some objectives, a couple of objectives, and I didn't hear a lot out of you. Just qualifications. What what do you hope to accomplish? Yes, sir. What I hope to accomplish is be is to be an ear for my particular area. Um, for my zone, for zone six. I obviously, just like every other parent, grandparent, and citizen in the room, have opinions about things that are going on, not only in our school system, but in school districts across the state. However, I feel like my primary role to sit on a board for zone six is to listen to the community and really be a, a voice for what our community is hoping for. Um, I do, again, bring to the table a lot of experience as well as board experience, but I really think my primary role would be to be the voice for Zone 6. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Janie Reed. Reader. Reed. I'm sorry. I'm Janie Reader, and I taught 30 years in Rutherford <laughs> County, and I am retired from Thurman Francis Arts Academy. And I would like to serve on this board if I'm fortunate enough to be elected uh, to, or be appointed, excuse me. Uh, I would like to serve with the principals, the students, and help them in any way possible. Uh, most of you have my bio, so you know a lot about me. And I've done a lot with the community. I have uh, done the backpacking program which gave to children uh, in need whose parents do not have work and they ha we gave food for them to have over the weekend. A hungry child cannot learn. So I am thrilled that you will consider the fact that I am uh, honest. I always did more than my share of in-service. I always was a team player. I think that the children of Rutherford County deserve a spokesperson in the elementary grades. And so I'm and you ask if I would be willing to run again. Of course. I don't feel that two years is long enough to really accomplish very much in this day and time. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Reeder? Okay, our final candidate is Mr. Robert Warner. Warden. Warden. Hello. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, committee members. I appreciate you guys allowing me the opportunity to speak in front of you guys. Uh, I do not have the background or educational background that everybody else might carry. Uh, I'm a concerned citizen in the community. I've been in the community, Rutherford County. I started at MTSU um, in 1998 with a political science degree. Uh, graduated in 2003, 2004 with a master's in business administration. Um, so part of that, I had a passion for Murfreesboro, Rutherford County. I've lived on and off um, for the past 10 years in Rutherford County. Um, my wife got a degree from MTSU in early childhood and elementary education. Um, part of what is driving me to this, I had a son 15 months ago. And so I started exploring and to answer your question ahead of time, exploring uh, seats on the school board and what would, uh, something that can change in the community and help out and make an impact. And I saw that would be in vacancy, which would be in two years. So yes, I would be planning on running for that vacancy. Um, but that concern 
was fueled by the last uh, several years of the Common Core debate. Uh, <coughs> you know, how are we as a community going to rise up? Uh, I'm a communitarian. I am very traditional in family values, and so standing against things that are happening in other states uh, should not make an impact on what's going on right here in Rutherford County and how it makes an impact on we're raising our children. What are we teaching our children? So whether it's mandated or what is given to us, we have to uphold those needs and cultivate the best community we have. And so that's kind of where I stood on that platform. Uh, the other platform is fiscal responsibility and making sure that we are meeting the budgets, making sure we are exploring all costs out there that will lower funds uh, or increase funds, but lower the cost of goods, as he was explaining. Uh, how can we continue to fuel the growth that's in this community? How are we going to fund that? How are we going to provide the educational standards and excellence that other uh, students can get right down the road? And are we going to be able to meet those challenges and those demands? So those are kind of the things that, that I look at and now I have a 15 month old son. So this opportunity came along, so I saw it. Um, my background, uh, I'm, I've been in the restaurant and hospitality industry for the past uh, 10 years. Um, my wife, again, what also drove me, she s s chose not to go into the school system. She stood and taught, and she was turned away by not the students, by some of the way the interactions of the administration was. And so she had a passion that she drove away, she was driven away from because of that, uh, is another reason why I have that passion. So we, we would also like to explore other opportunities, homeschooling and those types of things, but I want to start cultivating and, and implementing ideas right now for my, my child who's going to start in the education system in the next couple of years. So, if you have any questions, I thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I actually want to ask each one of them the same question. Is, okay. Uh, could what the state legislature is allowing now, basically we can have private schools uh, through a voucher system in a limited way. What's your take on that or, as far as the voucher system and the private schools? Personally, I am for a voucher system. Um, I think it is one tool that, that has the opportunity for us to explore um, people getting the best education possible. And whether it's across district lines or whatnot, uh, whether they're going to be able to get that same education right down the road or 10 miles down the road. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Mr. Warden? Okay, if uh, Commissioner Jordan, do you want to answer Commissioner P's question on uh, the voucher? I'll be glad to. I, um, the voucher system is tough. I'm basically not, not much in favor of taking public school money, which we need every dollar that we have desperately, and putting it into essentially uh, uh, a, a private school and a private school that may not be even anywhere located anywhere in Rutherford County, uh, particularly if we're in the business of saving the Memphis public schools from their bad administration. Um, I'd be willing to look at it and listen to it, but right now, uh, Commissioner P and committee, I, I'm, it's, it's slippery slope. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Right, Mr. Eakes? Well, I agree that it's very slippery slope. I don't think it's in its final stage. I think there are some attributes to looking at options. Uh, certainly you don't want to take the money out of county, but one thing you have to guard against, anytime you start <coughs> contracting out, then you become controlled by those who have your contract. <coughs> because they can change their prices very readily. And so you have to go back and come up with more money in order to satisfy them. They also have the option selecting students <coughs> for private schools. Therefore, 
their hope is they will do very well. They will have high achieving students in their schools. They don't typically cater to students who need that boost to get in that middle range and, and even progress. Amazing thing about students, about kids, <coughs> when you see that light go on, your own, you've seen it if you have children, you've seen you've tried and tried and tried to, to, to teach them something and all of a sudden, bingo. And they don't stay where they are right there. That line increases exponentially as, as they better understand. So I think we have to guard against what we do with vouchers, we really do. I don't think it's been thoroughly thought through. And right now, I would be opposed to uh, us spending our tax money on vouchers. I really would. Ms. Eady? Thank you. Um, I have known of uh, municipalities where the voucher system has been uh, necessary and has worked. I personally, personally don't think that Rutherford County Schools is that type of community. Uh, we're consistently uh, blue ribbon schools and reward schools. We have a very strong um, school district and I don't really see how the voucher system would be of any use to our students, uh, our schools. Again, as a board member, I suppose I would have to consider that if that came before us, but um, personally with what I know about Rutherford County Schools, I just don't see us as being the type of school system that could really benefit from or that would even need a voucher system. Thank you. Ms. Reeder? I do not feel that Rutherford County needs a voucher system. We have excellent sco uh, schools in our Rutherford County and our money can be spent in a wiser met way than with vouchers. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to double check and make sure Mr. William Harper hasn't come into the room. Okay. Are there any other questions for the applicants? This is, um, I guess, my expectations of the vote. I'm assuming there's going to be a motion to nominate all six and vote for one. Um, I would like to see the nominee leave here with at least four votes, the majority vote. So I guess my anticipation is if we vote one round and someone does not get a majority, then we may take the least amount, the person with the least votes, and eliminate that and kind of move forward. Is this, is, is this kind of what everyone else is thinking? Okay, then I'll ask for a motion. Run, run back your by your oh, idea okay. one more time. <laughs> I'm assuming the motion is going to be to nominate all, all six, six and vote for one. I would like for the nominee to leave this committee with a majority vote of four, but with six applicants, the first round could be no one gets four votes. So at that t at that point, we would take the um, the person with the least amount of votes and eliminate them and have a second round vote until we get to a majority vote. I, I think we've got, we're blessed with it's having some uh, excellent, excellent uh, people and qualifications. Yes. Uh, the difficult thing is going to be turning somebody down. Uh, it's it's easy to do if you're in a voting booth <laughs> when nobody <laughs> sees where, who you vote for. But uh, we're not in a voting booth, and we're making decisions based upon uh, what might be best for a particular zone, uh, three particular districts, and the uh, county as a whole. Um, I would uh, uh, I'd like to see more input from the entire county commission. I move that we. Um, uh, uh, vote uh, for the top three and send those on to the county commission uh, for the full commission to make a decision. So do you, so your motion is to? We vote for three. To nominate all six and vote for three? Vote for three. And, and the, the top three go to the county commission for the full county commission's consideration. So, so we would vote for just one candidate, but the top three votes get her? No, you vote for three. You vote, vote for the top three. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, I want to rule that the motion died for a lack of a second. A 
I'm still trying to think of my three there. We've got some excellent candidates. Oh, fine. Understand where Commissioner Phillips is coming from. I mean, I've been really impressed with some of these answers that I've been getting back and your backgrounds, and I appreciate you applying. Like I said, it's going to be a tough decision there. If he uh, will throw his motion back out there, I will second it. Okay. Same motion. Second. There's a second. Any discussion on this motion? I feel like it's our responsibility as a committee to make a decision and send one recommendation. I'm not necessarily opposed to this, but right. I think that we have the responsibility to yeah. them and right. send a recommendation. One. My, my thought is that th there are some excellent, excellent, and I'm, I'm struggling to make a decision. Uh, and and if, if we nominate and send one person recommended to the county commission, that's probably the only person that they're going to hear from, where there are other excellent candidates out here as well. So. That's, that's my thought, is that I would like for the full commission to at least hear from, have a choice, instead of just taking our recommendation. That's, that's my thought. Well, it is a, a big decision, so it would, it would allow more input into the system. Any other discussion on it? So we have a motion to nominate all six each commissioner vote for three, and the top three will go to the full commission for their recommend for their selection. This will go for Thursday night. Thursday night. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of this motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. We need to make a spreadsheet or anything. You got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> 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 Well, let me think of my three. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're last. Okay, thank you. Are you ready? Um, is the committee ready? Go ahead and call the roll, babe. Commissioner Johnson. Reader. Eeks. And Edie. Commissioner McAdoo. Uh, Jordan. Edie. And Eeks. Commissioner P. Jordan, uh, Eeks, and Edie. Commissioner Phillips. Jordan, Eeks, and Edie. Commissioner Stevens. Jordan, Reader, and Edie. Commissioner Turner. Jordan, Eeks, and Edie. Gooch. Uh, Mr. Jordan, Mrs. Edie, and Mr. Warden. It appears um, Edie has seven, Jordan has six, Eeks has five, Reader with two, and Warden with one. Okay, so uh, steering yes. will send to the full commission Mrs. Edie, Mr. Jordan, and Mr. Eeks. Uh, that meeting starts at 6 o'clock Thursday evening. Uh, congratulations to you three. I would be prepared to make a statement. To the other applicants, we really appreciate your uh, interest in public service. Thank you. So, all three should show up Thursday. All, all three at should six o'clock. At six o'clock. Okay. The um, I'm assuming that would be the last item on the agenda on this under steering, or to be under election and confirmations. Mm -hmm. I think it would I be think, under election and confirmations. I think it's under election and confirmations. Okay, so be sharp and early. 
Okay. It'll be early, right after six o'clock. Yeah, we said that. Okay, um, last item. This is Mr. Crocker. Okay. On the audit committee. Mr. Crocker, you were uh, recommended to serve as a CPA on the audit committee. Yes, sir. And the full commission would take the, your recommend our recommendation for you Thursday night. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for that. Um, I apologize for my tardiness. I was sitting on I-24. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, I left my office in downtown Nashville at 415. It generally does not take me two hours to get here. Uh, and tonight, and I apologize for that. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, but thank you for your endorsement, yeah. and I hope you'll be able to serve, you, serve the county. You're forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and last on the agenda, I believe, is the proposed standing uh, committee. I want to just briefly tell you my, my thought process on, on this recommendation. It was my objective to uh, assign each commissioner their first choice and possibly their second choice. Um, I consider the purchasing and property management committees as um, meet as, a, as the need basis, which means that they don't meet every month. So it's kind of more or less my thought that if they served on both of those committees, it's kind of like serving on one committee as far mm -hmm. as the number of meetings that you would attend. If someone did not get their second choice, and also try to get them on a, on a third committee if they were willing to serve. And that is my recommendation. Um, it was, it did come about that um, 21 commissioners, all commissioners did get their first choice. 17 commissioners got their second choice. I move that we approve the recommendation. There's a mo motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I'd like to make one quick amendment if I could. Okay. Um, it appears that um, uh, Doug Schaefer is a current member or was a current member of uh, the purchasing committee and uh, I. Since I'm retired, I've got time, but Doug is also retired and has got the time. And, and uh, I'm also serving on the uh, planning commission, and uh, I would uh, move to replace my name on the purchasing committee with uh, Doug Schaefer's. Okay, we have an amendment to remove Commissioner Phillips from purchasing and add Commissioner Schaefer. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Second. I have a question. Yes, sir. Did Doug ask for purchasing? He did. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Any other discussion on that? Okay, we're voting on the amendment. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, we're now voting on the motion as amended. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any other business before the committee this evening? It's, uh, we, have, we have some uh, meetings uh, coming up. I think they're all on first Mondays. Is there any, the, Becky, is there any conflicts with holiday meetings or anything with this committee? Do, do, do you know, or are you aware of any? There's a couple of committees that I'm not aware. I think everything probably yeah. like like uh, New Year's or something like that. Mr. Chairman, would that be? We should have an answer here in just a second. January 5th is the first Monday after the New Year's. So I don't think we've got any. Oh, holidays on the first. January, I'm not talking about New Year's, maybe. Um, what day is it? On? That's the 5th. That would be January, January 5th. 5th. The okay, first Monday. is a Thursday. So, so, so there's really no obvious conflict so. coming up. Well, Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on. <laughs> Are you okay with me on Groundhog Day? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the season. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we don't get stuff. All right, well, cool. So, any other business? 
then this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>